How's it going out there, folks? We, that is the Grim Reapers, and Cap, and what is no doubt a momentary lapse of judgment, have a bit of a treat for you today. While there exists no small amount of aircraft information, tutorials, and tactical recommendations out there, most of it seems to ignore the core aspect of our combat flight simulation, and that's the flight simulation portion. What we're proposing is with these videos, we're going to hopefully bridge that gap, providing the basic aeronautical skills, judgment, decision-making, and techniques necessary for all pilots, whether virtual or real. While these lessons will be presented at a very basic level to help those just starting out, there are tips, tricks, and general refreshers that all pilots can make some use of. So I hope you enjoy, maybe even learn a thing or two, and I'll be your instructor until they find somebody better. Call sign covered out. I think our bird's a little fast for today, though. So we'll just hop right out and see what else they have for us to fly. Before we get started, I'd like to ask a question. Has this ever happened to you? I'd imagine so. Oh, and welcome back. In case you hadn't guessed by now, your very first lesson is going to be in the topic of stalls. Now, nothing seems to be more feared to the non-aviator as the word stall or an aircraft stalling. It usually always conjures up an image of, you know, fiery crash, everybody dying, just a whole lot of bad stuff. But truthfully, a stall is nothing more than a maneuver, something that most aviators will practice hundreds if not thousands of times throughout their flying career. But what exactly is a stall, and why do they have such a bad reputation? In order to understand what a stall is, you kind of have to understand a little bit about the way aircraft operate. Primarily how they generate lift. Now, in most aircraft, and I'll use that term most for pretty much everything I discuss, because there's always a counterexample, lift is primarily generated through its wings. I've attached in here a little diagram so you can kind of see the formation and the differences in pressure between the top and the bottom. You as a pilot primarily manipulate this lift or this force that opposes gravity through a couple of different factors, including speed, shape, size, but most importantly, the angle of attack. And it's this angle of attack that truthfully determines your aircraft's not only stall characteristics, but when it actually stalls. Now, an aircraft stalls when the air that is opposite of its flight path, known as the relative wind, exceeds what we call the critical angle of attack. And this angle of attack is something that is just referred to as the aircraft's wing cord line, or essentially a line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge of an aircraft's wing to the relative wind. That air opposite the direction of travel that we were just discussing. As you increase the pitch on an aircraft to climb, you're actually increasing that angle of attack. Now as you're doing this, there's a boundary layer of air that's normally laminar, or it sticks to the top of the wing. And as you increase that angle of attack more and more, what that starts to do is actually delaminate or become separated. And what that does is create a whole lot of some drag, a lot of negative effects as far as lift goes, but it's it's a way that we manipulate our aircraft's altitude and can maneuver it. When it gets to a certain point, known as that critical angle, and this varies on different aircraft, there's no set hard angle, it separates past the point at which your wings no longer generate enough lift to remain airborne. Now it can happen at any speed, any attitude, any altitude. These things, while they factor into an aircraft stalling, do not necessarily make it stall. The only key determining factor is that angle of attack. And when you exceed that critical angle, the aircraft will always, always, always stall. Now, is this always a bad thing? Is it always a negative thing to stall? No, not necessarily. 
like I said, stalls are just a maneuver. Could they be bad? Could they have a negative impact? <laughs> combat situation or just failing to recover usually results in a very quick return to spectator. Understanding how to recognize and recover from stalls will not only give you that advantage and the ability to safely operate your aircraft in a wide variety of conditions, but it will also enable you to push it to the peak of performance and even beyond, and perhaps work some of these into your actual fighting ability. So for today we're going to practice recognizing the onset of a stall, as well as recovery from fully developed stalls in both clean and dirty configurations. And dirty is just another way of saying gear out, flaps out, such as you would be in a landing configuration. As you can see, I'm cruising along here in my venerable Yak-52, right at around oh, 2,000, 2,300 feet, mostly off the ground since we're not too much higher than sea level here over the drain. Make sure you have plenty of altitude to do when you're dealing with these stalls, primarily just because if things go bad, you want to have the room to recover. And down low, you, know, you have a lot less time. Altitude is life, airspeed is life support. So, easiest way to get this thing to stall is just slow her up a bit and keep my nose slightly higher than the horizon. What this is doing is it's just kind of creating a little more drag. As I slow, I need more lift generated from that angle rather than just from the speed. And this is going to start to pull us closer and closer to that stall. Now, if you're watching my control movements, and in the future I'll probably be smart enough to turn on the uh, controls overlay, but one thing you'll notice, and one of the first signs of an impending stall, other than the rapidly decreasing airspeed, or um, if you have any type of oral warning in the aircraft, such as a horn, or a light, or a buzzer, is that your controls will become mushy, kind of ineffective. And in a sim, this is kind of hard to demonstrate because it's really about the feel of that aircraft. but you can kind of tell that it's already taking kind of wider movements in my aircraft to hold that nose up. And this is just because as I slow, my control surfaces are much more ineffective and the air kind of does some weird things around its boundaries. So I'm just slowly holding it there, relatively high nose up attitude, and I'm trying my best to keep her coordinated. When practicing stalls, unless you really want to turn it into something really fun called a spin, it's best to do these as coordinated as possible or you're going to aggravate it. And that's typically a bad time unless you're anticipating that. So I'm just holding it here, I'm holding it, and I'll slightly reduce my power. This is just the easiest way to get me into a nice controlled little stall. See that little light blinking? That's probably telling me something bad, but I don't speak Russian, so we're not going to play much mind to that. But if you can see now, the edges of my canopy have begun to shake, and I'm not going to develop it yet. I'm just going to kind of ride the stall. That's what's known as a stall buffet, or it's one of the larger indications that you're about to enter an impending stall. And it's just because all that air, turbulent air that we saw in the diagram is just buffeting the hell out of this aircraft. So once I've got all of these, it's just a simple matter of do I fully stall it or do I recover? Now typically when flying, this is about as far as you want to go with it. Anything past this, you've usually screwed something up outside of a combat situation where it's necessary to really push. But if this was just another day at the office or that $100 hamburger flight and you're dealing with the buffet, probably mess something up. So now that we've ridden the buffet for a little while, I'll actually fully stall her. And as I said before, it's, it's completely dependent on that angle of attack and primarily your pitch attitude or what you're doing with the elevators relative to this. I guess before I do that, I should probably mention the secret to recovering from these stalls. And it's pretty simple. Stop pulling back. See this, this thing, this is gonna cause all your problems. If you keep holding this back, you will absolutely stall your aircraft. It seems counterintuitive, but when you start to fall, the last thing you want to do is pull back. Now, most aircraft are designed to be dynamically and statically stable, which means that when you start to stall, the nose wants to drop on its own to take you out of it. Some, like the more advanced F-16, F-18, those types of aircraft actually have computers that will keep you from stalling. Now, they'll override your elevator authorities and kind of keep you pretty nose high, and you can still auger it into the ground, but you're not going to typically develop into a full spin. But might as well have, or in full stall rather, excuse me. So as I'm holding this, and I'm approaching that buffet, 
you would normally want to get out of this by initiating a stall recovery or once you're fully developed. We'll do kind of both. And stall recovery is pretty simple. Like I said, the entire reason that we're stalling is because this angle out here, this angle of attack is too high. Easiest way to stop that is simply reduce it. Now, some people think you gotta jam the stick forward and dive the nose down, and that's just not true. Now, can you break a stall that way? Absolutely. Is it necessary to be that extreme in your corrections? No, not at all. So I'm gonna just hold her here in this buffet for a little bit, and I just want you to watch kind of the stick. All right, here she is. She's getting a little more mushy, having to work on the rudder a little bit, and we're gonna hold her there. There's that nice buffet. You can kind of see it on the edges of the canopy frame. All right, now watch, I'm just gonna relax. Went a little far there, almost went incipient. But notice the buffet stops, and I'm just reducing that. The throttle's staying the same, but I'm just increasing and decreasing that angle attack by adjusting my pitch attitude relative to the horizon. All right, there's a little bit of an incipient. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into what we call a falling leaf just to really hammer home the point that I can recover and break a stall typically without ever touching that power. Now that's definitely gonna come into play when you're talking about a good recovery, but the key point is just reduce that angle attack, reduce that elevator. So I'm gonna stall her, fully developed here, see if I can keep it coordinated. Okay, there's a small drop, I'm gonna relax, I'm not even pushing, just relaxing. Pull it back into the stall. Hold her there start to see the buffet. Notice wants to drop. There she goes. Just relax. Pull her back up. This time we're going to go through the full recovery, which is not only reducing that angle attack, but adding all of the allowable power up to maximum, depending on your configuration, and powering through it. So I'm going to hold her up. Wait for that stall. Here she comes, starting to roll over, nose down, power's coming in, bring her back up. Once again, you're reducing that angle of attack, breaking the initial stall, and adding the power back in so that you can then subsequently climb and regain any lost altitude in the maneuver. Now, like I said, it's, it's always relative. You've been seeing me do these with low power. That's just to keep it nice and smooth. But let's say I'm at full power now, and I stall the aircraft. Well, the principle is the same. I'm stalling because I've exceeded that critical angle. So, key, let that stick fall. So we're just gonna hold it. Note, once again, I'm full power. So, you know, if I had a rocket on this thing, or maybe like an F-16, she might hold up on her own. But for the most part, most aircraft don't have the ability to just climb without their lifts or without their wings rather generating enough lift so I'm holding it notice I'm really really slow now really really sluggish I'm holding her into that stall she wants to roll on me poor poor technique trying to correct with that aileron but it's a bad habit nobody's perfect all right so we're just gonna hold her there pretty nose high and with power you're gonna still stall her you can always stall an airplane but you're gonna do it at a much more aggressive attitude all right here she comes let her come off, correcting with my rudder first when I've regained flying, bring her back up. Like I said, it's important to ensure that you are recovering as coordinated as possible with your ailerons as neutral as possible. Because if you don't, you're gonna enter a much more aggravated stall, typically a spin. Now I think it's time we kinda bump the stakes up a little bit. What do you think? Go back to our uh, beautiful F-14. So we're slowing her up. Go ahead, get ourselves configured. Gear and flaps down. And this is where it's going to get really tricky because I'm going to start actually doing this while I'm pretty low to the ground here. So not a whole lot of room to maneuver, not a whole lot of room to screw things up. But that's fine. All right, got a gear down, flaps down. Check. And we're just going to do the same thing. Now this one's actually a little trickier. What people tend to do when they're in these landing configurations is they tend to hold their nose a little too high. Let's say they don't have enough power, their speed starts to get a little slow, and rather than correct properly, what they're gonna do to try to make that feel is they're just gonna keep pulling back on that stick. Remember what I said? Pulling back on the stick, that is the source of all of your problems. 
So they're just holding it here, holding it here, holding it here, and it starts to buff it install. Now with this type of configuration, you have to kind of clean up some of that extra drag. So I want you to remember, flaps, gear, flaps. Flaps to approach, gear up, flaps down. Now if I hold this, I'm stalling. But instead I recognize the stall, relax that pressure, full power. Flaps to approach, just gonna leave them for now. Gear's coming up. And once I'm recovered, flaps are coming up. And we just climb through it. Go around, try it again. Now I'm pretty sure I know what you expected to happen there. But thankfully, we avoided this time. Anyway, guys, that's enough for one day. Hope you found this useful, or at least a little entertaining. If you enjoy this series and would like to see more like it, Feel free to let us know if you have an idea for a future video. Post a comment below or join us in our Discord. Anyway, have fun, enjoy the view, and above all else, fly the airplane first. <laughs>